everybody, Brad Warner from Region Weather Live, and we're going to be talking about some severe weather running across the region for Monday, but it's not as cut and dry as one may seem, and we're going to take a look at why right now. I'm well, starting off Monday morning with this jet stream beginning to kind of sag into our region, and kind of out ahead of it, we already got the pretty good lifting going on through the morning hours, as well as just these little ripples in the atmosphere that might be enough to uh, create just a few thunderstorms already across the far northern reaches of North Dakota, northern Minnesota, as we get into the morning hours on Monday. Now, as we move into the afternoon, you can see how those winds sag just a little bit further south, more into our area. So some decent mid-level winds really begin to push into our region and along with that we continue to have these little ripples in the atmosphere and all that's going to kind of come together uh, for the potential for creating some circulation in the mid-levels uh, which in turn creates lift in the atmosphere and we're going to have plenty of moisture that's going to be bringing that chance of severe weather. In fact, if we go down to the surface and we take a look at the dew points, boy, look at this going into the afternoon. Mid-70s across eastern Dakota's western Minnesota running right up into the Red River Valley region. Plenty of hot, humid air working its way northward throughout the day on Monday. And throughout the day, we're expecting this warm front to move northward. Now, how far north? is a little bit to be seen yet as the models are really disagreeing on how far north that warm front will make it and i'll explain why in just a minute back to the south and west will be your cold front and then in between and kind of connecting the low further off to the north is going to be this occluded front uh, moving across eastern parts of North Dakota, northeast South Dakota. As we zoom in here once again in the afternoon, we see this model has that warm front cutting right through central parts of Minnesota. Now some models have that warm front a little bit further to the south, some have it way up to the north. And why that's important is not only a lot of times that's where some of the more significant severe weather can happen is kind of along that warm frontal boundary Boundary, but also notice with some of that energy, some of that real intense unstable air kind of runs up against either side of that or kind of runs up against that front and probably just leaks a little bit over. Basically what I'm saying is the further north this runs, the more northerly some of this real, real unstable air can make it. And as we continue to connect the pieces of the weather puzzle together, that is also important because as we go about 10,000 feet into the air, we can see these temperatures really do warm up. We're talking 12, 14 degrees Celsius. And oftentimes kind of in the weather community, um, we are looking at 10 degrees Celsius is kind of that line uh, for that cap. Now, when we talk about cap, it's like a lid being put on top of the atmosphere. So when you have all kinds of souped up energy and everything's unstable, but you have a cap, the storms are not able to bust through and just blow up. So if we have a cap on, it holds the thunderstorms down and it really reduces the potential for severe weather. So we have the warm frontal boundary somewhere in here. We've kind of got our capping line a little bit further to the north. We've got our stronger jets streaming winds blasting up and through here and so the question becomes where and when were these storms develop and how are they move throughout the day and going into monday evening so we take a look at a couple of different solutions here one is as we get into uh, kind of the early afternoon hours and back a little more where some of that cooler upper level air is and where that uh, trough is or where that occluded front is, we've got the potential for seeing some storms to develop kind of in that Devil's Lake Basin, basically in northeastern parts of North Dakota, and then move east southeast. We're trying to dip into some of that more moist air of uh, that really unstable air, but perhaps running into some of that cap that we were talking about and limiting how far south it will move now as it goes into the afternoon, at least according to this, it kind of washes out, which I don't think really is going to happen. I think once these storms get going, there's not going to be much to stop it with all the instability, but nevertheless, kind of one little solution there. Now, another solution, one that I think is maybe a little more likely is we're going to start off with some showers and storms across the northern parts of North Dakota, Minnesota, and that's going to be kind of the focus for storms as we get in the afternoon, probably creating uh, some outflow and creating enough lift from these early 
earlier storms that will allow these storms to get going mainly across perhaps northeastern North Dakota, northwest Minnesota, and then trying to dive southeastward again, trying to reach these unstable, this, this really gassed up, juiced up atmosphere further to the south. So the storms are going to want to kind of dive south, and we're going to be talking about the potential for some very large hail, uh, some damaging winds, and of course we can't rule out the potential for a tornado with these things, but uh, boy, I tell you, the hail would really be the problem with this type of scenario storm. And by this point, we're talking 6, 7 p.m. Monday evening. This is around 8, 9, and 10 by the time they reach Wisconsin. Now, one more scenario and one that I have seen earlier in the week and kind of got washed out, but then another model kind of picked up on this type of scenario where we have this low pressure system here. We have this warm frontal boundary. We've got the cold front. We've got the occluded front. And essentially, we were looking at those storms beginning to develop kind of again, maybe just south of the Devil's Lake Basin along the James River Valley, close to uh, Jamestown Valley City, and then beginning to move through a Fargo Wapaton and really beginning to dive southeastward and push along that warm front and basically turning itself into a windbag event, kind of a derecho type of event. You can see how that storm wants to bow out and head towards eastern parts of Minnesota. This is around um, 8, 9, and 10 p.m. And look at how quick that thing just blasts into Wisconsin. By 10 p.m., it's already flying into Wisconsin. So that would be more of a bad wind damage type of scenario if that particular scenario develops. So if we look at what the SPC has for Monday, this is the two out of five or a slight risk. Everything within the yellow region, this is our one out of five risk or more our marginal risk of severe weather. But of course, our slight risk area kind of handles these types of scenarios where we've got that one storm developing across Devil's Lake and pushing across the north. Uh, we've got uh, the cover, the scenario covered where they develop in through here and begin to dive south and east. And it also kind of covers the scenario where we've got this windbag event that basically moves and marches quickly to the east southeast. In fact, if we take a look at the categorical type of scenarios, this is the tornado outlook. So just for now, a 2% outlook. And mainly they are saying, the Storms Prediction Center is saying, just because it's so unknown exactly how this will develop. There's so many uncertainties at this point that they're just kind of going with a low risk, a 2% risk, pretty much across the slight risk area. Now the hail category, look at this guys. Boy, if any of these storms begin to develop in across eastern parts of North Dakota and make their way east, southeast, when of course, some of these, if this one, uh, this scenario develops, we're really looking at some large hail, but nevertheless, we're looking at a decent chance of some hail across the northern parts of Minnesota and into eastern parts of North Dakota in particular. Now the wind damage, they basically covered the scenario for that derecho type of event for that bow echo to develop and move east southeast. So that's why they have put this hatched area in through here on that type of potential. Again, they even said, we're not exactly sure which scenario will play out. This is the Storms Prediction Center saying, we're not exactly sure, but if this one does develop where it kind of develops in across the, the kind of in that Valley City area, moves across Fargo, Wapaton, they had to put that in there for that potential for some damaging winds running across central parts of Minnesota. It wouldn't surprise me if they feel they get a better handle on this, that they would put an at least an enhanced risk of severe weather somewhere across our region for Monday. So we'll have to keep an eye on that as we wake up Monday morning. And oh, by the way, there's also a few scenarios or some models out there that don't put hardly anything at all with this system on Monday, just because it's probably looking at the potential for the capping being too strong for the day on Monday. So all kinds of scenarios, all kinds of problems to look at for these storms as we go into Monday. So very difficult forecast indeed. And while most of our focus will basically be within this region on Monday, given there's a good amount of instability further back to the south and southwest, you know, we can't forget the potential for some scattered or isolated severe storms within this region as well. Of course, the Storms Prediction Center does have a marginal risk, even stretching back across into Rapid City. 
and even back into central parts of North Dakota, given the amount of instability. So not completely out of the woods in these regions, but a, a little more isolated type of event that could happen uh, further back to the west and south. Now, beyond Monday, we've got this cold front sagging in on Tuesday that could bring some showers and some thunderstorms across northern Minnesota, northeast North Dakota in the afternoon. Maybe an isolated severe, but I don't really think so at this point. And then we get a day or two of some high pressure overhead, so not a whole lot going on until we get into maybe Wednesday night and Thursday where we've got the potential for some storms across western parts of South Dakota. And then as we get into Thursday afternoon, things become a little more active perhaps across North Dakota, Minnesota once again, and again going into Thursday night and lingering into Friday as we have our next little system moving across our region. So we'll have the live stream up and running for Monday, so be sure to check in there. Hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already, and then hit the little bell button that pops up alongside that so that you're notified when a live stream is up like I'm gonna have for Monday. And then once you are on, be sure to check out the chat as we'll be answering questions throughout the day. And as we get closer to that severe weather event, perhaps later in the afternoon, more so into the evening, I'll be able to be in front of the camera and answering any type of questions that way as we get to later in the afternoon. And hopefully everybody will be safe and not much happens, but we'll be there just in case it does. All right, everybody, for Region Weather Live, I'm meteorologist Brad Warner. Everybody, have a good day.